PDF and Peach Tools. Awesome to see you here again. I have had a few emails from you fellas on how to, how to turn your uh, normal plasma torch, your HF, your high frequency plasma torch, into a pilot arc torch using the same machine that you already have. Now I've got a little uh, little tip for you on how to do it, but I wouldn't recommend you doing it. I'll show you how to do it, and um, just informational video only guys. Uh, you do with the information what you like. Um, but anyway, it certainly works, and uh, I've got me out of a few scrapes anyway. So have a look at the video guys, and remember if you like my channel, subscribe down below, drop me a comment, say hi, and tell me if you've ever done this done, done this little trick before. Hey guys, if you don't have anything like me, where you, you're doing a bit of plasma cutting and you're stuck and you, and you can't get your grinder in to grind a bit of paint off and you need to whack something off under your car or whatever and it's covered in paint, and you, what you really need is a pilot arc torch so you can burn through it as you go. Um, but you're only running a um, high frequency machine that doesn't have pilot arc. I'll show you a little trick in a minute on um, how to turn this into a pilot arc torch. Like I say, I don't recommend that you do it. I'm just showing you what I do. Um, anyway guys, well I'll, I'll show you for the people that don't know how to try to cut this with this torch. Right, what so I guys, I've got my plasma cutter running. It's running at uh, 40 amps. I've got my earth clamp here. So we'll put the old, um, put the old earth on the, on the steel that we're trying to cut. And then we'll start the old plasma and we'll see if we can cut them. See the issue I'm having here? You see that guys? It's not arcing up. See that? See what it's doing? It's not arcing up because of the uh, paint on the paint on the steel. That's where we need the pilot arc to come in where we can just push the button and a flame comes out of here automatically and just you can just cut it off. But uh, like I say, this is a high frequency machine and it just doesn't do that. So how the hell can we make it do that? Um, I'll show you in a second. I'll just um, show you why it works. Comes up through here. You've got your copper or your brass fitting here. It's got your holes in here for your ear that comes out of here for your compressed air and it swirls around in your swirl ring, wherever that might be hiding your swirl ring here. And it creates the vortex and then your plasma cutter. Well, we'd, we, we all know that, right? So this here is part of an electrical circuit that it's connected to here, so this is all one. But the thing is with these, when you put your electrode in, like so, this is now into this same circuit here. If you put your swirl ring on top of it, it's not only a swirl ring, what it does is it insulates your, your cutting nozzle here from your electrode and it insulates it from, from um, from your main body, from here. So if you understand that, what's happening here is that you've got a slight gap in between the end of this electrode and the top of the inside of your cutting tip, like so. So what it's basically saying is that when you screw that in there like so, this here is insulated from this piece. So, in other words, it's not one circuit all the way through. So when you put your earth clamp onto your work, like so, and then you touch your tip onto your work, like that, it creates a circuit, and then the spark jumps from the electrode, because this is not joined, remember, it jumps from the electrode to your tip, your compressed air blows the spark, which becomes a flame, out of the end, and then you start cutting. So what we need to do is trick this into thinking that it's already touching this before it does and that way we'll get a uh, pilot arc flame coming out of it and we'll be able to cut painted material like so. Now there's a really easy way to do that and I'll show you in a minute but once again I don't recommend that you do it but I use it like this and this is just the way I do it but um, you do what you like but I'm just saying this is I don't recommend doing this so uh, anyway guys, that's the basics of these, and uh, all HF torches run exactly the same basically. The tip is insulated from the body of the electrode, that's how you get your spark, like a spark plug of a car, creates in here, the air pushes it out, and you get a flame coming out of here. So that's probably as clear as mud guys, but uh, anyway, this is the best I can do to explain it. And if you don't know the difference between HF and Pilot Arc, just click up the top there now. I'll put a video up there explaining the difference. I've got a whole video on that as well.
Now, if you're using a LG40 or PT31 torch, you can use any consumables for these, basically. I am just happen to be using nickel-plated here, but you can use the nickel-plated or the copper consumables. Makes no difference. It still works fine. If you want to know the difference about the uh, PT31 consumables, click up the top. There's another video up there, and I'll explain the difference and All show right, you where so to get them. So let's show you how to do it, basically. What you need is, it's really complicated, you need a piece of wire. And I just happen to have an alligator clip on the back of mine. You don't need an alligator clip, you can just use one piece of wire if you like. Uh, alligator clip's just a little bit easier for me. Um, get your one piece of wire. Take about that much of the covering off the end of it. Twist it around so that you can um, do something with it. Now this will last probably three quarters of an hour cutting before it burns out. Right, now this piece of wire, you don't have to pull your gun to pieces, you don't have to do anything. In fact, if you, if you pulled your gun to pieces and you hooked that wire onto here, it won't work. Because like I said to you before, this here is insulated from the machine from your tip. And what you have to do is pull your torch that you're making a complete circuit with the earth. So what we do is we get your torch like so, you get your piece of wire like so, You wrap them round, and I just do a tight loose fit if you understand what that is, just so I can change my tips out and I don't have any issue. So I'll show you a tight loose fit, so you get it like that, you just pull it off like so. No worries at all, when you put another tip on, you put it on like so. Quite simple really, absolutely dead simple. Now you're saying, oh, what are you going to do with the other end, Pete? What's the story with the other end? Also guys, if you're uh, interested in changing your plasma cutter machine to one of these PT31 torches or an LG40 torch, once again click up the top, I've got some videos about that and how easy they are to change and how cheap they are. Because uh, if you've watched any of my videos on plasma cutting, you know I actually love these torches, they're pretty cool. Uh, they're my favourite torch. Because they're cheap, and uh, I'm cheap, so there you go. Hey, everyone's cheap, so, so there you go. Hey guys, so I've got my torch, I've got my wire on it, nothing pretty complicated about that. Grab your earth lead, put your earth lead on whatever you're cutting like so, and I'll just give you a quick demonstration. Grab the other lead end of your wire, and I've got my alligator clip on it, like I showed you before, but you don't need an alligator clip, just wrap the wire around there if you want to. But I find an alligator clip is a lot easier, because you can just get it on and off real quick. The same as the other end with, with this little noose, just get it on and off real quick. Make sure your um, plasma consumables are tied in the torch. And um, if we push the button there on this torch, what will happen? Wow! Okay, so that obviously works. So now, what do we do now? Uh, put your earth clamp on there. Put your alligator clip on here, or wherever you can get it on there, as long as it, as long as it's touching the earth. That's all you need. So I'll stick it down there. Get your torch with your piece of wire on it, like that. And uh, the longer you can have this beer, the better, because you can hold it up and keep it out of the way of the um, of the arc. So if you've got insulation on this piece here, if you have insulation on this piece here, it starts to burn and it goes a bit horrible. So you can, if you have this here, quite a bit of insulation taken off, then it doesn't burn up. And this will last quite a while, because the wire can get red hot, but it doesn't, um, doesn't catch fire or anything. And then uh, we'll just try and cut this and see how we go, eh? So I'll hold it with a pair of flies so I've got a decent grip on it. So you can see it, hold it with a pair of flies, hold it down. Right, let's see. rugged but um, it certainly works uh, as you can see it got rid of that it's pretty hard to to hold everything at once but uh, you get the general idea and um, that's what I use guys um, that's what I use to uh, to make a pilot arc out of a uh, HF torch 
it's really good for cutting thin plate or something that's rusty or something and you don't want to get the angle grinder and you don't want to do all sorts of stupid things by cleaning it up. It's just easy to whack a bit of wire on it and just boom, gone, you know? Um, yeah, and so I cut that. As you can see, that's quite thick still. Blew through that, no worries whatsoever. Now if you have a look at, um, have a look at this tip, I'll show you. I don't know if I've got a wire brush here handy. No, I don't think I have got a wire brush. But if I clean this tip up here, you'll see that it hasn't destroyed the tip at all because you didn't get the blowback. I'll see if I can zoom in on that, guys. See that tip? That's still uh, pretty well usable to me. You can still see it's got the, got the hex, the cross in it. So uh, that's not too bad. Um, so yeah, it works. It definitely works. So uh, anyway, that's uh, my video for the day, guys. Remember, if you like my channel, subscribe, drop me a note, tell me if you've ever done this sort of thing. But like I say, I don't recommend that you do it. It's just what I do if I want to get rid of some paint or something that uh, that I have to plasma cut through, and I can't be bothered, um, can't be bothered scraping it off with a with a grinder or anything silly like that. So uh, anyway, guys, remember to subscribe to the channel, drop me a like. Say hi and uh, tell me what you guys have been up to. See you next time.